Hi, my name is Sarah. I'm a nurse at TMC Obstetrics and a 500-hour certified yoga instructor. Today we'll be working on some stretches that might help relieve some of the sciatic pain that people get in pregnancy. So first of all, everything that we do is going to be with a chair. So picking a, a sturdy chair, nothing with wheels, obviously, um, and you don't have to have a mat. Uh, we just need to think about the chair that we choose having the ability to have a 90 degree angle, so straight out and st straight up and straight out at the hip and then also at the knee. And so if we've got a shorter chair where our knees are a little higher, we would just use like a, a blanket or a thick towel to place underneath the hips to elevate the hips. If we need the, if the chair is a little bit taller and so our knees are winding up lower than our hips, then we would just take that blanket or folded towel and place it underneath the feet. We're always working with a stable spinal structure. So everything that we do, thinking about a string coming from the top of the head and lifting the crown. See how much taller I just got? That lends itself to more core support, which is a really big issue in pregnancy because our abdominal muscles are being really stretched to capacity. And so that puts a lot more stress on the back muscles. And so it's always thinking about posture. So as we begin here, we're actually gonna sit back in the chair. So our backside and our, back, our lower back being uh, supported by the chair and thinking about the, the curve of the spine. So we have a natural gentle inward curve at the lower spine, that's called the lumbar area. And then a little bit higher, it curves out a little bit, that's the thoracic spine. And then it curves in again at the neck, the cervical spine, and we're gonna lift up through the crown. So we never want a flat back. There's always those gentle curves, but we just don't wanna over curve in the thoracic area. That's pretty common, especially as we get a little bit bigger in the front with pregnancy. Placing our hands on the thighs and lifting through the crown. Let's bring the shoulders forward, up toward the ears and down along the back. Nice, so now we've situated the spine. We're gonna close the eyes for a moment if it feels comfortable. If it's not comfortable for you, just lowering your gaze, relaxing your eyes down toward the floor. We'll think about the breathing, drawing a little breath in through the nose and out through the nose. If we've got a little congestion or that pregnancy rhinitis, we can use the mouth, just pretending that we're drinking through a straw. So breathing in through pursed lips and out through pursed lips, nice and slow. We're just settling down our minds so we can really focus on our bodies here. Coming to our yoga mat always with a little bit of a busy mind. So just bringing ourselves into a couple of moments of peace here. And then we can keep the eyes closed or just bring a real gentle gaze. We're gonna scoot the hips forward to the edge of the chair making sure that we move our feet. So the feet are always underneath the knees to give us support. Our sit bones, so if we move the fleshy bits of our backside aside, we can find the bony prominence at the bottom of the hips. You might need to sit a little forward or back depending on what your spine is doing today to find that. But we want that sturdy structure. The knees are hips distance apart. So our, hip, our pelvises, no matter how much fluff we have around on the hip side, our pelvises are all the same size. So between the knees, it shouldn't be more than five to seven inches. So sometimes we think because we're a little fluffier in the hips, we need to have our knees wider, but actually to support our structure of our spine, we wanna keep that five to seven inches apart. Beautiful. We're gonna place our hands out on our thighs, but remember we don't wanna bring our shoulders forward. So shoulders down and along the spine, we're just gonna reach our arms out long and then pretend there's a string in the middle of the back, drawing the back toward the back wall. Exhale, inhale, sitting up. Let's lift the chest a little bit, back bend here. So we're keeping the chin engaged. It's not a flop back with the head. It is a little bit more open. Let's move in that little flow here, exhaling as we go back and inhaling as we lift our heart center toward the sky. So we're gonna come through this movement a couple of times. This one is warming up the middle of the back, but also the sacral area. So the piriformis muscle, which is the one that kind of pinches or lays on that sciatic nerve in the back, 
That's the hammock, that piriformis muscle. It's the hammock to the sacrum, to the back side of the hip, that or the pelvis. That's the lowest part of our spine there. So we're going to warm up that area a little bit, remembering to move with our breath. And then we'll pause here for a moment. Let's bring our hands out to our sides so our palms are facing our hips. Spread those fingertips. We're going to get a lot of different places today as we as we work into that, that piriformis muscle and the hips. Let's turn the palms outward. Inhale, lifting the hands up overhead. Exhale, press the walls away. Beautiful. We're going to inhale the hands up once again. And then just press the wall away with the right hand. Beautiful. I'm going to find the bottom of the chair here with my hand. Let's lift through that left hand so we get taller. See if I just got a little taller. And then we're tipping our teapots over toward that right side. Let's lift with the fingertips so we don't want to curve down toward the floor. We still want to be lengthened through the side body. Let's inhale up once again, bringing that right hand up again. And we're going to turn heart center toward the right side and float the hands down. Remember that structure of the spine. Good. We're going to keep that lift. Inhale, get taller. So lift through that string that's drawing toward the ceiling. Exhale, a little twist in the spine. Inhale again, lift, lift, lift through the, through the chest. Exhale, a little twist. Let's inhale the hands up, untwist that spine, coming back to center. Press the wall away, this time with the left hand. Good, we find the bottom of the chair, get nice and tall with the fingertips, and we're tipping over. Couple of deep breaths here, expanding the side body. And we're inhaling back up, beautiful. Same thing this side, heart center coming over toward the left, we float the hands down, maybe to the inside of the right thigh, maybe to the outside of the left thigh. The other hand is coming to the back of the chair, inhale the chest up tall, and we're twisting. Remember to breathe. Let's float the hands back up. We're coming back to center. Very nice, press the walls away. We're going to lengthen out the right leg in front of us. Every time we lengthen out the leg, we wanna engage the knee a little bit. So there's a little gather in that upper thigh, in that quad muscle, and the toes on that foot are engaged. They're drawn up toward the nose. Let's get nice and tall. As we exhale, just bring heart center forward a little bit. Inhale back up. So we don't want to sit in a stretch that creates some um, rebound tension in that muscle. We want to float up and down with the breath. So make sure we're moving the breath. Maybe it's a big movement. Maybe it's a small movement. It doesn't matter. Next time we're up, we're going to turn the toes. Remember, the toes are engaged. They're drawn up toward the nose. We're going to turn the toes out toward the right side. Inhale. This is a smaller movement. Okay. Exhale. Coming down. Yep. We definitely feel that on the outside of the knee and the ankle. That is our IT band. Inhaling up. Exhaling down. This is a very gentle movement. We're moving with the breath and we're not doing anything that causes a distinct level of pain. This is an uncomfortable stretch. We're going to come in and out of it nice and slowly. Work with your body. Beautiful. And we'll lift back up. So the next stretch we do will come right into that piriformis muscle. So we're going to cross the right ankle over the left ankle. So this is a great place to start. Some people have a lot of tightness in those hips and there's no judgment there. It's just where our bodies are at today. So that's a great place to be. And we're going to lift up tall and sink forward. Once again, my hands are on the chair, so I'm feeling a little more steady here. Now, if we're not feeling the stretch there, we've got a little more range of motion in the piriformis muscle with the toes engaged, drawn up toward the shin, we can cross the right ankle over on top of that left knee. So if you're crossed at the ankles, that's great. If you're crossed on the knee, that's great. It's whatever works for your hip. So we're gonna find that anchoring point with the hands, lift through the crown, hinge forward, exhale. Inhale up. Remembering this is that piriformis muscle. This is the muscle 
that's given a lot of those issues with sciatica, but we have to work with all of the areas, all of the muscles in that area in order to make sure that everything can relax and give us a little more space. So that's why we're doing these other exercises too. Nice, we're gonna come back up, release that leg back down. Remember we've got those feet hips distance apart and we lengthen out the left leg. Toes drawn up toward the shin, little bit of a gather in the quadricep muscle, the front of that thigh to protect the knee. We're not gonna hyperextend and press into the knee. There's a little softness there. We hang onto the chair, inhale, get tall, exhale, hinging forward. Feeling it in that hamstring. So the hamstring connects at the uh, base of the lower back and then down at the knee. It's a really big postural muscle, helps us to stand. And so it's pretty big and strong, one of the biggest muscles in the body. So it's very important that we coax it into some relaxation. We're moving through that stretch gently. Next time we're up, remember, we're going to tip the pinky toe down toward the floor, toward that left side. We get nice and tall and we hinge forward. Smaller movement, that IT band is connective tissue that goes from the ankle up to the outside of where the, um, the leg bone attaches on the pelvis. So it's really important that we're going nice and gentle there. It's not, a, it's not a real stretchy area, but it can cause a lot of things. So people with tension headaches, um, upper back discomfort, a lot of that's coming from tightness in the hips and the IT band. And we're coming back up, bring those toes back to center. And then remember, this is where we're gonna cross over, at the, over the ankle, or up on the thigh, whatever works better for you. And remember, our sides are different. So most of us are having that sciatic pain on one side and not the other. So we need to be gentle and meet our body where it is on each side. We are not symmetrical. So placing the hands on the chair, we get nice and tall and we hinge forward. Beautiful. Remember, we're not rounding the spine. It's a hinge at the hips. So we're not bringing the, the, the back forward, not rounding. It's just a hinge movement at the hips, moving with the breath. Inhale as we come up, exhale as we come back down. Beautiful. We'll place the feet back on the floor, and then we just wanna keep those muscles loose, remind them everything is okay. We stretch them a little bit more than they're used to being stretched. So I call this the windshield wiper movement with the knees. We're just gonna float them back and forth comfortably, encouraging that stretch to stay in all those areas that we just stretched. Now there's certainly a lot more than we, that we could do, but I wanna keep this really focused on the sciatic area. Of course, we could work on strength in the core and also in the hips. And so there are other things that we could be doing, but I want you to be sure to be able to take some little bites out of this. So we'll keep this short and sweet today. Bring the knees back to center. We can just scooch. This is good for the piriformis muscle too. Just one hip and then the other. We're scooching back in the chair. Coming back to the back of the chair, let's allow our bodies to relax, but with good posture. So pregnancy lends itself to poor posture and that's gonna create a lot of those discomforts uh, that we're pretty used to hearing about. And so it's really important that we think about good posture whenever we can, that strengthens the back which supports the stretching that's happening in the front. Let's go ahead and shut our eyes down or bring that gaze down in front of us, taking a couple of deep breaths here. On the inhale, we're sending peace and gratitude throughout our body. There is always something to be grateful for. On the exhale, releasing anything heavy that's not serving us today. Let's do that two more times. Inhaling. Just positive energy. Exhaling anything gray. Then one more time on your own. And we'll bring our hands to heart center. This is that universal gesture that we close yoga practices with, meaning the light in me, my essence, my, my piece of universal energy, honors the essence in you. So literally, I see you. Until we see each other again, be well.
take care of yourselves. Make sure you're hydrating. Namaste.